We live in a world that runs on data. It's how Amazon and Netflix know which movies and products to recommend, how Starbucks manages a global supply chain, and how Uber connects drivers with passengers in real time. But the thing is, data skills aren't just for tech companies or professional analysts anymore. Everyone works with data to some degree, and everyone can benefit from data literacy skills. In this video, we're covering an important topic that will help you take your data literacy to the next level. So we've talked about how to interpret tabular data. Now let's get some practice interpreting some common charts and visuals. One of the most common and effective visuals is the bar or column chart, which is used to show comparisons between categories, like so. In this case, we're looking at a bar chart showing sales by region. And if we were to rotate these bars vertically, we would have a column chart showing the exact same thing. For these visuals, each bar or column represents a category, which can be compared by their height or length. And one reason why people tend to favor bar and column charts over other visuals like pies or donuts is that it's very easy to see the relative differences between values, especially when they're sorted in a logical order like they are here. So thinking about how we would interpret this example here, we can see that the south region drove the most sales with 650, while the east region drove the fewest with only 202. Another extremely common visual is the line chart used to show trends over time. Here's an example line chart showing annual revenue over a six year period from 2015 through 2020. Note that the Y axis or the vertical axis is a numerical field, in this case, net revenue. The X axis or horizontal axis is a date field ordered chronologically. And the line itself shows how those values have changed over time. In this example, we see that revenue climbed to 73 million in 2018, dipped to 50 million in 2019, and peaked at 91 million in 2020. Now, another visual that you'll commonly see, and one that tends to be quite polarizing in the data community, is the pie or donut chart, which is used to show composition as parts of a whole. Here we see a donut chart, which is just a pie chart with a hole in the middle, showing the percent of customers in each status level, gold, silver, and bronze. Each segment of the donut represents a category, which can be compared by their size. And as a best practice, those segments should be sorted largest to smallest, like they are here. Now, if you're curious, the reason why some people are so opposed to pie charts is that it can be difficult to compare angles or sizes of similar segments, especially compared to a simple bar chart. Now, my stance is that pies and donuts are perfectly valid under the right circumstances, which is that you show no more than three or four segments, you use clear data labels, and you sort your categories in descending order. So interpreting this example, we see that more than half of our customers, 57%, have gold status, followed by silver at 25%, and bronze at 18%. Now let's move on to some slightly less common but still extremely useful visuals. We'll start with the clustered bar or column chart, which is used to show composition across categories. So here we have a clustered column showing sales by both product and customer gender. Each cluster represents a category, in this case product, and each individual column within that cluster represents a subcategory, in this case gender. Just like a traditional bar or column chart, those subcategories can be compared by the lengths of the bars or the heights of the columns. So interpreting this example, we see that products A and C skew towards male customers based on the height of the blue columns compared to the dark gray columns, while products B and D tend to skew towards females. Now we can actually tell that same story with the same data in a slightly different way using a stacked bar or column which is also designed to show composition across categories. The only difference is that instead of clustering columns side by side, now we're stacking them on top of each other. You can either stack them based on their actual volume, in which case each stacked column would be a different height, or you can show them as percentages of the total, which is what you see here, and that's known as a 100% stacked column chart. So similar story, each column represents a category or product, and each segment within the column represents a subcategory or gender. And by comparing the size of each segment, we can understand the composition of gender for each product sold. The takeaway here, just like our first example, is that male customers account for 60% of sales for product A, but only 33% of sales for product D. 
Next up, one of my personal favorite visuals, the area chart, which can be used to show changes in composition over time. So consider this example showing product level sales by year. On the y-axis, we have a numerical field, sales. On the x-axis, we have a date field, year. And we can interpret this chart by looking at the overall height of the area, which represents the total sales, or by comparing the individual categories, in this case products, based on how the size of each individual segment changes over time. Now, this example here is a stacked area, which is most common, but there are other variations as well. Area charts are amazing because they pack so much information into a single visual, but they can be a bit tricky to interpret at first. So looking at this example, it can be helpful to focus on one segment at a time. Product A in light gray accounted for about half of all sales in 2020 before tapering off in the following years. Product B in dark gray grew slightly but remained pretty stable over time. And product C in bright blue appears to have launched in 2020 and grown each year to the point where it now accounts for the majority of total sales in 2023. So we're able to get that really clear picture of the product mix here and how that composition has changed over time. The last charts we'll talk through are a bit more specialized but still quite common, starting with the scatter plot, which is specifically used to show the relationship between two variables. So in this example, we're looking at heights and weights for a population sample. And with scatter plots, the y-axis represents one numerical field, in this case weight in pounds, and the x-axis represents a second numerical field, in this case height in inches. Note that we aren't dealing with categories here. Instead, each point on the plot represents an observed value, or in this case, one individual in our sample. So to interpret this visual, we see a strong positive correlation between height and weight. In other words, as height increases, as we move further to the right on our x-axis, weight tends to increase as well. Now, keep in mind that correlation does not imply causation. What I mean by that is that a scatter plot can tell us that two variables move in the same direction, like shark attacks and ice cream sales, but it cannot tell us that one variable caused a change in the other. Next up, we have a pretty simple one, the filled map, which, as you might expect, is used to visualize geospatial data. Here we see a map of U.S. states where the color or fill of each state represents the population change between 2020 and 2023. So states with a large population increase over that period are shown in blue, and states with a large population decrease are shown in dark gray. So interpreting this one, we see that Idaho and Florida were among the fastest growing states during this period, while New York and Illinois, among others, saw populations decline. Last but not least, let's quickly talk about dual axis or combo charts, which can be used to show data on multiple scales. Here we're looking at two metrics, website sessions and conversion rate, which would be impossible to show using a single y axis because they're on completely different scales. In this case, we see thousands of sessions per month, but conversion rate is a percentage that falls between zero and one. So for a dual axis chart like this one, the primary y-axis on the left represents one numerical field. The secondary y-axis on the right represents a second numerical field. And the x-axis is shared between the two and is typically a date field. This is where chart legends and axis titles are really important for readability and clarity. Here we can clearly see that sessions are displayed as dark gray columns and mapped to the primary axis, while conversion rate is shown as a blue line and maps to the secondary axis. To interpret this chart, we can see that our website sessions generally trended up throughout the year, peaking in October, while conversion rate dropped from about 20% to under 15% over the same period. And one word of warning here is that you should never use a dual axis chart purely to make a pattern or trend more distinct or dramatic, which can end up being quite misleading. It's really designed for cases like this where you want to show the interplay between two metrics that are related, but measured in very different ways. Now, there are many, many more types of charts and graphs that you may encounter, some of which we'll touch on in the communicating with data section of this course, but hopefully this gives you a good primer on how to interpret some of the most common ones. If you enjoyed this content and want to see more, we've got a brand new data literacy foundations course, and it's entirely free. 
You can check it out at mavenanalytics.io. So whether you're an individual looking to build confidence, a leader seeking to empower and upskill your team, or a data professional just trying to stay ahead of the curve, this is the course for you. We've got a lot to cover, so let's dive in.